All right, let's bring in three reporters following how this is playing out on Capitol Hill and the campaign trail. The New York Times, Jonathan Martin, NBC's Perry Bacon, and Roll Call's Shira Center. And Shira, I want to start with you. A little bit of a focus on Capitol Hill. We were supposed to hear from the House GOP border working group last week. Their report did not come out. It was delayed till this week. It seems that the House GOP wants to pass whatever they want to pass sort of at the last minute, maybe the end of this week or early next week, and then sort of get out of town and move away. It doesn't seem Congress is really rushing to deal with this right now. No, absolutely not. Uh, so Congress is in town this week, and they're in town till Thursday at 3 p.m. next week. That does not leave any time at all, really, for Congress to get this done. Uh, we're supposed to hear more details about the House GOP's package, which includes, uh, reportedly includes changes to the 2008 law and some funding, but much less than the president has asked for. As a result, not much of a chance. And John Boehner was asked about this at his news conference last week. Yeah. And if he's not optimistic, neither should anyone else be. Yes, he did not see he had a lot of optimism. And he always says he's the guy who's the most optimistic guy in the room. But there's a lot of divisions between the House and the Senate. And even there's some divisions in the House itself. So there's not enough time in the congressional playbook. Seems the clock will run out. Perry, you were at, uh, at Net Roots. You obviously have been covering this out in the field. There's a, I think, a little bit of a, a, a division within Democrats of some that say that the president's been too tough on these deportations. It was a movement to try and bring upon comprehensive border uh, immigration and reform, and it hasn't gone that way. What did you see when you were at Net Roots, and how do you think this is playing out in the for the Democratic Party? You know, Biden spoke at Net Roots Nation. In the middle of his speech, someone actually, a group of people, got up and stood up and yelled, shouted, stop deporting our kids. Yeah. And you heard that happen. And at Net Roots, this is the, this is the left the left among Democrats. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of opposition to the president's idea of change the 2008 law. People there do not want to see it easier for kids to be deported. They're pretty opposed to the idea of changing the 2008 law. And you heard that from, from voter after voter at Ned Roots. In fact, people praised Martin O'Malley, who's one of the people who's mm -hmm. might run for president, for coming out and criticizing this idea as well. That's fascinating. That could be an interesting battle between Hillary and O'Malley on that specific mm -hmm. type of issue. Jonathan, you've been going out covering these various Senate yep. races. What I find fascinating is in the Acela quarter, you'll talk to Republicans and they'll say, oh my gosh, our party is so far behind on immigration reform, we're going to get killed in the upcoming elections. But if you actually talk to voters in these conservative districts, this is a huge issue for them that they're very passionate about a lot of them. And there's not a lot of give, shall we say, to a comprehensive immigration reform idea. That's why you haven't seen movement on it in the House at all. Right. I mean, because the Senate passed it in the summer of 2013, and the House ever since has been doing very little on the matter because uh, the House being up every two years. Right. being responsive to more conservative drawn districts. There is no political incentive for those House members uh, or Republicans who have overwhelmingly non-Hispanic districts uh, to move on this politically. And therein lies the, the, the challenge for the GOP. The elites, to your point, the Acela Corridor, yeah. uh, they see this as a long-term national party issue, as essential to, to get back to the White House. For those members who are up every two years, whose political incentive is to get reelected, to fend right. off a primary from the right, Can't do it. all they want to do is, is keep their seat. Their politicians, uh, they have a survival mechanism. Right. And so they're less concerned about the, the future of their national party than their own seats, and that is the challenge for the GOP. You add in this issue, Luke, of of kids coming to the border en masse, and it, it has set back any hope whatsoever for immigration mm -hmm. reform. And in specific states, I mean, where does this, this perhaps help Democrats? In Colorado, does this get sort of uh, Mark Udall there? Colorado Maybe comes Louisiana to Louisiana to a degree with Landrew, some of the immigration uh, I think Colorado is, is obviously the place where this could really have the most impact because what happens there in the non-presidential years, it's tough for Democrats to get out Hispanic voters. Right. This could offer a lever to, to Udall uh, to really work against Cory Gardner. So I think that's the state to that watch. Would be Rick Perry making a move to put the National Guard down at the border, something that John Boehner has called for, and you saw uh, Rick Perry there in Iowa, slowly but surely getting to making that point. What's the politics behind that? Is this sort of this idea that he's going to stand up and be the conservative warrior now, sort of uh, uh, making this his issue? Because this was an issue that was problematic for him last time around. He was being criticized for being too humane. Rick Perry, 
going out on this uh, leg. This is a great opportunity for him. Graham. This issue landed right in his lap. Yeah. It's on the yeah. border. He's got the right position now. I remember in, 2000, in the 2012 campaign, he was the most pro-immigrant of the leading candidates, yeah. and therefore Romney attacked him on that. This has worked out perfectly. He's got, He can deploy the National Guard. He can show himself doing something on an issue where voters in Iowa are very anti-comprehensive mm -hmm. immigration war. This is a great part, you know, great step for him to start his potential 2016 campaign. We talked about it a few weeks ago. Rick Perry is getting his groove back. Yeah, I guess to a degree. Although you can have a rather, uh, you know, very pregnant Perry pause right there. Uh, yeah, I think it is. You know, he's he really is lucky in terms of timing. I think we're going to watch this issue over the next couple months, especially during congressional recess, when a lot of these members go back home and hear from their constituents, especially in some in the southwestern states. Right, that's going to determine these next couple weeks if this is going to reach the fervor of, let's say, health care 2010 recess or every other congressional recess. Yeah, the fascinating to watch is, is Martin O'Malley trying to be uh, sort of out human. Maine, the rest of the, right. the, the Democratic field, and then Perry and Ted Cruz Good trying to out conservative yeah. and out hawk the and conservative. On, on that and point, quickly, John, just to figure out with no. you, can, can anyone in the GOP take the issue of immigration reform and run with it like Jeb Bush style and say, I'm going to go more on the liberal side of the issue? Is it possible with that primary uh, electorate? You, they wouldn't call it the liberal side, but yeah. uh, sure there is. Uh, you know, there's an opening there. If you look at the polling data, there is support among even Republicans for yeah. a pass to citizenship. The problem is that in a context of a campaign, a primary, it gets really tough to carry that it's message. You tough. have to do it in a cautious and a sort of well-turned way. Uh, and it's not easy, especially yeah. if you're Jeb Bush, when you got conservatives who have other and questions about your stances and besides Mark Rubio, what yeah. he thinks of that and, idea and, is where I would start with that. Not if a you good do one. take that idea, you better win Florida in the primary <laughs> battle or you'd be a lot of trouble. Iowa's tough. Yeah, Iowa's yeah. tough would be really hard. Jonathan Martin, Perry Bacon, Shira Center, thank you so much. We appreciate it.